coming up in Ms. Tastic. If you're a teacher, make sure you head on over to the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT to find hundreds and hundreds of art lesson plans and resources that you can use in your classroom. They're all easy to use, kid friendly, engaging, and fully prepped so you can say bye bye to the stress and hello to success. Now let's head on in to this episode. Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and today we're going to learn all about the element of art space. Now the element of art space refers to the distance around, in between, in front of, and behind an object. So for instance, if I have my lovely container of crayons, there is space around my container, right? There is space in between the crayons and the holes, um, and then there's space in front and behind that you can and cannot see. Ooh, look at that, some cool overlapping, right? You can't see it, but sometimes you can. You got some overlapping happening. So that creates a sense of depth, right? Because there's implied space that there's one thing behind the other. Now, you can also have space in two-dimensional artworks and in three-dimensional objects or artworks, right? So if there's an actual physical object, there's space around it. But there's also space around a composition that is two-dimensional. So for instance, of these paintings, there is the actual subject, so this one is the cat. Oh, wrong way. This one is a paintbrush, right? But there is space around the paintbrush, and there is space around the cat. So, for instance, there is also positive and negative space. In the paintbrush artwork, this is the actual positive space, right? It's the actual object, which is a paintbrush. But the negative space is that pink that is around that paintbrush. Or in, in the instance of the cat, the positive space is the cat wearing shutter shades, and the negative space is the areas around the cat. And that is positive and negative space. It's that simple. So sometimes you might be drawing the positive space. For instance, I might be drawing my hand, or I might be doing the negative space version of it. I might be drawing all the areas, the shapes in between my hand, that everything that's not my hand. And that's two different ways to look at it. But there's also other ways to take a look at creating space in an artwork. So in two-dimensional artworks, we could use overlapping. That is one thing in behind another or one thing in front of another that we draw. And that will create implied space. Right? It's going to create the sense that there's one thing that's behind another thing. So that's overlapping. We can use overlapping to create a sense of depth, right? An implied space that there's one thing behind the other. We can also use size. Things that are closer to us appear a lot bigger than things that are farther away. So even just using my hands here, you can see one hand is closer to the camera, it looks bigger. One hand is farther away, it looks smaller even though when I bring them together, they are the exact same size. Whoop. I'm smaller and I'm bigger. Same size. So we can make things on our artworks bigger to make them look closer to the viewer and smaller to make them look farther away, even though they might be the same size. Cool, right? <laughs> So, and then of course we talked about positive and negative space. So we could have a positive space uh, example where you're drawing the actual object or you could have the negative space where you're drawing everything around the object. And that is space! Boom! Drop the mic. There's a crayon, but I don't actually have a mic. Wouldn't that be nice? I need a mic to drop the mic. That's what I need. I gotta find one. Anyways. We're gonna head on over to the art studio where we're going to draw a cat in a landscape, so a series of cats in a landscape using size and the cats in relation to the horizon line to create a sense of depth in a landscape. So some cats will be bigger and some cats will be smaller and in relation to the horizon line to create a sense of 
depth, right? Some will look closer and some will look further away. And then we're going to do an artwork of overlapping dogs to create a sense of depth by implying that one thing is behind another. All right, are you ready? If you are, give me a thumbs up. Say woo! And let's make some art. All right, so we're going to create a landscape with some cats some spherical cats in a landscape to create a sense of depth and we're going to be do using our size in relation to a uh, horizon line to help us create the cats. First we're going to go up to the top 30. Top third of our paper, not 33rd. Draw our horizon line across. And then we can Add some mountains. We'll add a sun. All right, let's do some cats. We're gonna start off with a circle on the front. And you can use anything to draw with, anything to color with. And then we're gonna draw a slightly smaller circle, farther back, a little farther back, closer to the horizon line, right horizon line, closer to that. Smaller circle, very small circle, and a dot. If you remember my hand, a little bigger, makes it look closer to the viewer. Smaller and closer to the horizon line makes it look very far away, even though this is flat. All right, let's add a tail. watercolor paint to fill in this area easily. You can use colored pencils, you can use wax crayons, you can use whatever mediums that you want. Now remember I'm adding a 
as you add other details or choice details, you want to add them smaller, farther away, bigger, the closer it is. I have permanent marker I can just paint right over you can also do that if you've used colored pencil 
or wax crayon. space background is done. So let's now make our artwork with overlapping dogs. All right, let's do our overlapping dogs. We're gonna add zigzag lines for our forehead. Curving lines for some ears. Zigzag lines for the head. Curving lines down. tail. Curving lines. Upside down triangle. Two lines out. Curving lines up and over like little rainbows or upside down U's and let's pick them up. And we got dog number one. Okay, we're gonna do it three more times. Zigzag lines, like another forehead. We're gonna do it slightly smaller this time. Curving lines. Zigzag lines. Right at the bottom of the head. Two curving lines down. We'll connect to this guy. A little tail. Oh, maybe I should add some little lines for movement. Triangle, and I can always turn your paper. Aha! Two little lines. Two eyes. All right, let's do another dog. Do some zigzags for the forehead. Two ears. Zigzag below for the face. Two lines down. Little tail. Six, or the upside down triangle and a mouth. With little eyes. And now we have our overlapping dogs. Let's paint them. You can paint them whatever color you want. So I'm gonna do a normal colored dog and then I'm gonna make silly color dog dogs. Okay, so I'm gonna paint it in.
nail color, the paint the ears and the nose. All right, let's make some silly colored dogs. I want to do a purple, I mean a blue dog first. Just like that, our overlapping dogs are done. Well, my friend, that's it for this episode. If you have completed these artworks and you had tons of fun, please give this video a big thumbs up to show your appreciation and subscribe to this channel. If you complete these works and you snap a picture uh, with your phone, whatever device, make sure you so share them to social media and take me at Ms. Artastic or use the hashtag Ms. Artastic so that I can check out your completed works. As well, if you're looking for some more art ideas that you can do at home or in a classroom, grab my free guide up here. It's super easy to download and check out lots of different art ideas that you can do at home, anywhere, anytime. And if you're wanting to access my art lesson library full of hundreds of different art lessons, make sure you head on over to artastickids.com and join the Artastic kids online membership so you can make art anywhere anytime on any device using some really fun art mediums see you in the next episode